Hello everyone, I'm Heidi with SOS Adventure, and if you're watching this video, that means you've completed your mission trip in Africa. Let me just say congratulations. At this point, you've returned home and you've already in the process of reintegrating back into your normal daily life. From the moment you signed up for your trip, SOS has come alongside to help train you and prepare you for the mission. And now that you're home, we wanna to continue to do that to ensure you're as healthy and fruitful as possible as you move forward in God's plan for your life. Here's a sobering thought. There's no guarantee you'll continue to live a life sold out for Christ. Over the years, we've watched many missionaries come back and they continue to serve the Lord, praying for the sick, starting new ministries, returning to the mission field. But we've also seen others who come back and they crash and burn. We don't want that for you. We know that you don't want that either. The decisions you make now in response to what you experienced on the mission field, well, they'll make all the difference in which direction you go. As a way to spur you on, SOS has created the post-mission aspect of your training experience. We talked about this in your final meeting on the mission field, but in case you don't know what I mean, this is a four-week strategy on Adventure Gateway with simple readings and tasks to help you process your trip experience and where to go from here now that you're home. If you haven't already begun these tasks, I cannot encourage you enough to jump in now. We've included some really practical challenges that normal missionaries, just like yourself, have faced upon returning home. Not only does it help to hear you're not the only one experiencing these things, but we offer very practical advice from seasoned missionaries on how to respond to these challenges in a way that both honors the Lord and keeps you on a path of fruitfulness. So please take the time to go through these tasks. So now I want to encourage you to take a moment and to think back to when you first heard the Lord call you to this mission. When you first wrote down your name on that sign up sheet or filled out your registration online, what were you thinking and hearing in that moment when you felt a yes in your heart? Now I want you to ask the Holy Spirit this question. Why did you call me, Lord? I can't answer that question for you, but I can tell you this. While your trip might be over, God's purpose in sending you continues on. How many times does Jesus talk about fruit in the Bible? We know he teaches that good trees produce good fruit. We know he said it is the Father's will that we bear fruit because this shows we're his disciples. He says we've been chosen and appointed to bear fruit that will last. He says we can only produce fruit if we remain in him. Of course, then there's the fruit of the Spirit, and I can't help but think of the fig tree that was cursed for not producing fruit. Why am I talking so much about fruit? Because God's heart for us is that we would be one with him and that our lives would show it through what we do. I believe that this concept applies to God's purpose in sending you with SOS to the mission field in Africa. Now that you're home, he wants you to remain in him and continue to bear fruit. God had a plan for what you would do now in response to the mission long before he even called you to go. He did not just want to use you for two weeks in Africa to accomplish his purpose. You're far more valuable than that. I believe God wants you to know him so intimately that each day you wake up, you do so in awe of being a son or a daughter of God, thankful for your salvation and with the understanding that God wants to partner with you every day to accomplish his purposes wherever you are, not just in Africa, but in your home and in your workplace, a grocery store, church, more. For some of you, this may look like continuing to love and serve in the areas you're already engaged in with a new or a continued boldness for the gospel. For others, it may look like doing something completely new. Maybe you're going to create a new ministry within your local church to serve cross-culturally in your city. Or maybe you'll ask a team member or another friend to start going on the streets of your neighborhood to share your testimony and pray with people. Or maybe it's time for you to go to ministry school to further prepare for missions. Whatever it may be, small or large, I'm fully convinced that God wants to do something in you and through you as a result of going on this mission trip. And you believing this too, and being intentional to discover what that is will make all the difference in the long-term impact this mission will have on your life. Your team coach, fellow team members, and SOS staff are here to support you. We're here to pray for you and to help you take that next step. In just a moment, you're gonna take a few minutes to fill out a short survey sharing how your trip went. This is an opportunity for us to connect with you one last time, to hear about any lows you experienced and to celebrate all the highs with you. You'll also be presented with some possible next steps for you to take to continue on a fruitful path. As you continue in your meeting today, I encourage you not to just go through the motions of another meeting. Instead, I hope you will open your hearts to one another. Get real and raw. 
make the most of your time together, and spur one another on. Celebrate, cry, get excited about what God has in store for the future. On behalf of SOS Adventure, let me just say thank you for serving with us. We appreciate each and every one of you, and we hope to see you back on the field.